Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this series, we're going to be taking a look at the 12 days of DT exam revision, preparing you for a GCSE exam in January for those all important mocks. Right, so what's going to happen then? Well, essentially, I'm going to release a video for the 12 days of Christmas, so starting on the 25th, going all the way through, and each video will be about 10 minutes maximum. They're going to be short, sharp videos for helping you with your revision. And they're going to be going over some, some key tips, I suppose, for the core content. Let's get started. Right, so welcome to the 12 days of revision. Now, of course, we have to start with the first day, which in this case is on the first day of DT my teacher sent to me. One good look at the life cycle assessment. We've got to kick off how we mean to go on. So let's get started with this life cycle assessment then. Now, I'm sure you've seen this, this diagram before. Let's use my little pointer on here. So you probably noticed that we've got the raw material extraction, part manufacturing, transportation, use, recycling or, or uh, disposal. So chucking it in the, in the bin and then maybe it can go back again to raw material. You're probably aware of this. And you've probably seen this, you've probably got them stuck into your books or revision guides, you've probably got a worksheet on it perhaps, identifying what these parts are. But let's go a little bit deeper in today's session. Now, again, I'm going to keep it under 10 minutes, so I'm going to be quite short and brief with this. Uh, let's start off with our raw material. The, now, as designers, as a company selling a product or inventing a product or even distributing a product, we have a responsibility to look after our world, our planet. We've only got one uh, at the moment until... Uh, colonize some others but for now we've got to look after this one so we need to be responsible and on what we're doing and what we're designing now a lot of designers don't think about the LCA but it's more and more becoming encouraged to do so and I encourage you to think about it with your products in the future so raw material extraction and these are the questions that I want you to be thinking about and being able to answer certainly from an exam point of view uh, these might be some of the things that come up and, and crop up then so raw material extraction how much energy is being used to extract the materials? Big question there, ladies and gents. Big question. So, of course, here I've got a plant vehicle uh, used to pick up some, some logs from a, a felled tree. And I'll use the timbers as an example for this uh, process. But it could be applied to anything. So even if it was uh, extracting polymers and extracting oil for, for plastics, it could be the same thing. But again, how much energy is being used? So this vehicle is going to be using fuel that's fairly obvious that it's going to be using fuel but it's it's not something we think about we just think oh well i, I need to get uh, some planks of timber so i'll just jot off to the nearest hardware store and I'll, I'll pick up some planks of timber but you want to realize that actually those planks have been moved about and chopped and felled and packaged up using plant vehicles and they're going to be using energy and from a social point of view we've got employment of course which is a good thing because we've, we're employing people to operate these vehicles uh, but from a negative standpoint, it's using diesel. It's using a fuel that's finite. We don't have enough of it. It's going to run out. And that's going to be, of course, pumping out CO2, which is going to be really negative. Think about that in your life cycle assessments. It's the vehicles that are going to be used in the extraction, the tools that are going to be used in your extraction, like the chainsaws, etc., all powered by finite resources. And what kind of damage is that going to be doing to the environment? Well, of course, naturally, it's going to be uh, releasing, pumping out big chunks of CO2, which again are going to pollute the environment, pollute the ozone layer, and cause problems for us um, in the long run. Next, we've got transportation. Sorry, we haven't got transportation at all. We've got manufacturing. I haven't got there yet. So we've got raw material extraction, and then we've got the manufacturing which is how much energy is needed to process the material. So as you can see from my little example here, I've got a felled tree which is being processed into planks or it will be shaved into planks. And of course, we've got this huge machine at the back which looks terribly expensive, but moreover, again, it's going to be powered by something. And if it's mains powered, by, by the looks of it, it's mains powered. It's going to be powered by a, a factory. And that factory is probably going to be using finite resources. So it's going to be steam to uh, create those turbines that are going to generate the electricity used to power it and of course as we should know by now that that steam power is going to be pumping out a lot of co2 into the into the uh, atmosphere again very negative not something you think about though is it when you're thinking about well let's get it into logs from logs to uh, planks rather you're not going to think well we're going to be using a tremendous amount of electricity to do that and where's that electricity coming from well it's coming from a power plant where's the power plant coming from well it's coming from 
a uh, finite resources that have been burned to create steam that's going to push a turbine, it's going to generate electricity. It's, it's like, mm, do you really think about that? No, I just think, well, I'll use this plank of wood for my, uh, my, my bird box or whatever I'm going to make. Uh, right, so, uh, if you imagine here that we cut maybe one plank, if we're lucky, two, three planks out of that, what kind of excess waste is going to be created? So we're going to be pumping out all these planks, great, but then we've got all this waste bark. Where's that going? Question to ask yourselves. It's got to go somewhere. Uh, are we going to burn it? If we're burning it, what are we going to be creating as we're burning the timber? We're going to be creating more CO2, aren't we? So not always the best plan, but it's something to be considerate about. Is there a way we could reduce that waste? Is there a way we could use that for a fuel source that's going to benefit somehow? Let's move around. So now we've got transportation, and of course, the first port of call really is going to be long distance lorries that are going to be transporting these up and down the countries. Uh, it could get even worse if we're importing that timber from a different country. I've got to get this lorry uh, to, to offload, but of course, we're going to be using diesel again, pumping out more uh, harmful gases. But once it's offloaded, it's then going to go into maybe a ferry, which again is going to use fuel to get from one part of the world to the other. Or we could chuck it on a plane, which would be quicker, but even more disastrous because, of course, aircraft is going to use a lot more uh, fuel to get across the, uh, the oceans. Um, also, consider this. What materials are being used in packaging? You're not just going to throw a load of logs uh, and planks into the back of that truck. We're going to wrap them with something. We're going to package them so they don't get damaged. How have we created that packaging? What kind of waste is that creating? Is it wasting space? So am I packaging things in, in there, which means I can only put 24 logs in there instead of 32 logs. Then I need another journey. And how much pollution is used in the travel? Like I said, we're going to be using a diesel there. It's going to be pumping out harmful gases. Unless, of course, we could use biodiesel, which would help reduce that impact on the environment. Um, or we could use, hopefully in the future, we can certainly get into a position where we can have electric long distance lorry drivers. So the power is going to be coming from electricity, which again could be regenerated in a closed loop cycle with solar panels. And if you don't know what a closed loop cycle is, I suggest you have a look at a really great uh, YouTube channel called Student Energy. And they've got some fantastic videos. In fact, I might drop a few links down below on renewable energies uh, in this session. So you can have a go look at those. Right, let's move around to the use of our product. So, uh, of course, I'm going to stick with this uh, uh, bird box analogy. So we've used that timber to create this box. And how will it, the product affect the environment? Well, in this case, actually, we're going to have a positive impact, aren't we? Because we're going to be encouraging wildlife um, back into that environment. So that's going to have a positive impact. The LCA is not a doom and gloom. It's a, it's a position where you can think about and challenge those important questions about how it's going to impact the environment. Will it use energy? Well, in this instance, no, not really. It's not going to use energy energy at all. Uh, it's going to be uh, just placed uh, in, into a tree and it's going to encourage wildlife there. So that's great in this in this particular instance. But of course, if we were using maybe a plastic product, then uh, maybe it's got some LEDs on it, then it's going to maybe have some kind of uh, negative impact. Does it have parts that can pollute? In this case, no, it doesn't. We've got the timber. We could recycle that. We could possibly reuse parts if they're not broken or damaged and we could even uh, turn that into a bit of a fuel source which I'll show you about that in a little moment. Um, if I had maybe an acrylic front to it, so I had a really nice pretty acrylic front with like a laser cut bird on the front to maybe make it look a bit more aesthetically pleasing, then yeah we've got a problem there because I've got to get rid of, that, rid of that plastic haven't I somehow and if it's been glued on I'm going to really struggle to get that off. So think about how mixed material parts can pollute and how I'm going to get that out there. Uh, right, very really quickly, we're just going to go back to disposal. How easy is it to dispose of that product? Are we just going to chuck it away at the end of its life? What happens to it if you're going to throw it in the bin? It's a big waste. Uh, how much waste will it cause when it is wasted? Is it like a big product like that bird box is going to make an awful, uh, awful mess of uh, a, a landscape? So let's, let's think about not throwing it away. Some of you might be going, ah, but sir, sir. What about if you used uh, a log burner? We could burn that fuel. Oh, that's a great idea, fantastic idea in fact. We could recycle that timber if it's just timber and turn it into a fuel source and keep us warm. Great. Downside to that of course though, is it releases CO2. So again, we have to measure and weigh up that impact. Is it gonna be creating a massive amount of CO2? Probably not. 
So have a think about those. Right, that's our time up for today. Let's move back to home base and we'll finish off and we'll go on to the second day tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode of the first day of, of DT where I sent to you uh, the life cycle assessment and then uh, look forward to seeing you in tomorrow's episode where we're going to be looking at the second day of DT. Until next time, stay safe. Bye now. <laughs>